What's up YouTube? It's Josh Hewitt. It's time to do it with Hewitt. In this video, I want to talk about my top five fitness myths. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there in the fitness industry, but I decided to pick these top five myths to address. These are things I still hear about from friends and clients, so let's get right into it. myth I wanted to address is strength training will make women bulk up. A lot of women still seem to think that if they lift weights, they're going to get huge and muscular. This couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, I only wish it were that easy. If, if it were that easy, ladies, every guy would look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, every guy that works out. You, you simply don't have the levels of testosterone to build that kind of muscle. Consider how challenging it is for a man even to gain a little bit of muscle. And they have significantly higher levels of testosterone than you have. You're just not built to put on that kind of massive muscle without taking exogenous hormones or steroids. The women that you see, uh, bodybuilders um, and even some physique athletes, female physique athletes, are a lot of them are on hormones, are on exogenous hormones, they're taking steroids to help build that kind of lean muscle tissue. It's not going to happen naturally. What bulks you up is eating an excessive amounts of calories and not performing enough activity. So you don't have to worry about this. In fact, strength training has so many benefits for women. I'm going to post an article for that down below and encourage you to check it out if you still believe that this myth holds weight. The next big fitness myth I wanted to address is Stretching reduces risk of injury and can improve your recovery. Nah, -uh, this isn't the case, people. In fact, there's a recent study from the University of Milan that suggests stretching after exercise will not reduce muscle soreness and does not improve your tissue recovery. And also, there's plenty of research to indicate that stretching, we're talking about passive static stretching, stretching before activity can reduce your muscle activity or actually dampen the nervous system activation of your muscles and increase, potentially increase risk of injury. And at the very least, will reduce your performance in that workout. So stretching before or after exercise will have minimal benefit as far as recovery or reducing injury. And in my opinion, and from what I've read, can in some cases cause more harm than good. Now we're talking about passive or static stretching here. Again, performing a mobility workout or some sort of dynamic warm up can be very beneficial. If you're not convinced or you want more information on this topic, Check out the article I posted below. I linked to a lot of other resources there as well. I encourage you to check that out and reconsider your stretching protocol. Moving on to fitness myth number three. You need low intensity steady state cardio to burn fat. A lot of people believe that because you're in the fat burning zone while you're doing slow, low intensity cardio, such as going for a long, slow run or jog uh, for like 30 to, to 60 minutes, for example, uh, you're in that fat burning zone, you're going to burn more body fat. But really you have to look at the overall fat loss or the overall energy expenditure from a form of exercise. And high intensity interval training shows that not only are you burning a lot of calories, a lot more calories during the, the HIIT workout itself, but because of that afterburn effect, you're burning more calories for several hours post exercise as well. And it just doesn't happen the same during low intensity steady state cardio. I mean ultimately as far as the amount of fat you're losing, you need to be in a slight caloric deficit, so really it's about energy expenditure versus calories in. But if you want to optimize the time you invest in exercising for fat loss, you want to focus on high intensity interval training versus low intensity steady state cardio. Again, I'll post a link to an article on that down below, check it out. Fitness myth number four, one of my favorites. Don't eat fill in the blanks, carbs or don't eat food after 6 p.m. or it will turn to fat. And the, the fact around this is that it's actually 6.04 p.m. That's the point at which all of your foods magically turn into fat when you eat them. All right, that's a myth too. Now I have read that for some people, if they're really fatigued and they're eating later at night, it's hard for them to control their, their cravings or their hunger uh, to monitor their portion sizes. However, there's no magic hour after which the food you eat is gonna turn into fat. Just monitor your overall calorie intake Ideally, split your meals up into at least three or four meals during the day, spread out, you're getting a regular energy input out throughout the day, and you're going to be fine. And finally, fitness myth number five. I can't believe that I still need to address this one, but some people still seem to believe that muscle will turn to fat when you stop lifting. 
I even heard someone recently tell me that he was very muscular when he was younger, worked out a lot for college football, and now he's fat because all of that muscle turned into fat. For reals? Listen, muscle and fat are completely separate tissues. One does not become the other one. What is probably happening is you're taking in a lot more calories while you're active and lifting and exercising. You stopped exercising, but your caloric intake was not decreased, and so you started to gain body fat. Okay, simple. Let's just, anyone who still thinks that muscle becomes fat, no, that is not true. Okay, so adjust your energy intake based on your activity level. Uh, or just don't stop lifting. That's better. Better yet. Okay, hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, post them down below and I will reply. Make sure you subscribe. And until next time, stay strong.